Hello dear students, in today's class we will continue our discussion of obtaining a combined expression for gradient and curvature drifts. So, in the last class we have seen how an expression for gradient drift and curvature drift can be obtained. So, V del B which is the velocity due to gradient of the magnetic field is m v perpendicular square by 2 q times b cross del b by b q and the curvature which is called as a v r the curvature drift velocity is v r is equals to 1 by q m v parallel square by rc square rc is the radius of curvature times rc cross b by b square so these two expressions are valid for a realistic magnetic field which means any magnetic field will have a gradient and also a curvature now we are going to combine these two expressions and write the total drift that the particle will experience whenever it enters into a magnetic field right so if you look at these two the first term seems to be affecting the perpendicular kinetic energy the second term seems to be affecting the parallel kinetic energy so we have seen if you consider a particle to have a velocity v so the perpendicular component is this and this is the parallel component so it is right v square is v perpendicular square plus v parallel square right now this discussion is going to be referred to as vacuum drifts now in order to combine these two terms the first difficulty is that let us say even if we if we ignore whatever appears outside the curl in each term we have one curl between b and the grad b and the other term between r c and b so we have to find out a way wherein both of these curls can be written in a similar way so to do that we will consider the cylindrical geometry of a magnetic field and we will try to see how these two terms can be written in the same way so let us say we consider a magnetic field like this which is curved in nature like this and with respect to the center rc is the radius of curvature of the magnetic field the magnetic field lines are going or curving towards let us say towards the left you consider a coordinate system such that this direction is phi cap the, the direction in which the magnetic field lines are going towards is phi cap this is the radially outward this one is the radially outward direction this let us say we call it as r cap and this is the z cap so we have we have r phi z coordinate system we have r cap phi cap and z cap if you want to translate it to a cartesian coordinate system you have to assume that you define the angle phi such that it is increasing when you measure it away from x axis and towards the y axis the positive y axis so you are you are taking the magnetic field lines along phi right so they are they are rotating along parallel to phi so this is the equivalence when you draw it to a cartesian coordinate system so we can write the magnetic field b to be equivalent to b phi as a function of r along phi cap so what does it mean the magnetic field is along phi cap it is changing along r so it has a gradient along r so as you go along rc it is changing its magnitude is changing so for instance you take a unit area here 
or a unit area here, the number of flux lines that will cross that will go through this unit area will be different, therein indicating a gradient to be present in this direction. Right. So, we write the del B, del B is equals to del B is the magnitude for example, is along R cap. Right. So, the magnetic field is directed along phi cap and it is changing along R cap, I hope it is clear. Right. So, if you take such a magnetic field and then we have all the variables, we, we have established what is del B, what is R C. So, when we are now trying to see how these two terms can be combined into a single expression. Right. So, let us uh, take some hint from the cylindrical coordinate system. If you have del cross B, you can write del cross B in the cylindrical coordinate system as 1 by R dou Bz by dou phi minus dou B phi by dou Z, all of it along R cap plus dou B R by dou Z minus dou B Z by dou R along phi cap plus 1 by R dou by dou R of R P phi minus dou by dou phi of P R along Z cap. So, now the magnetic field is B R P phi P Z. This is the cylindrical components of the magnetic field vector. But what we have made a specific choice of magnetic field which is like it has gradient along the radial component and it is directed towards the phi cap. Right. Now, if you substitute the magnetic field configuration that we have taken, we can write. So, if you are wondering how I got this big expression, this is from the, uh, you can refer to any standard book which gives the curl of a vector quantity in cylindrical coordinates. So, this is the curl of a vector quantity in cylindrical coordinates. This is pretty standard. So, I have just used the form as it is and I have substituted the components of B that I have taken for this picture. So, if I substitute B R, B phi and B z values according to the configuration that I have described here, described here, what I can write is it is going to be 1 by R times 0. What does it mean? B z has no variation along phi, along the phi direction it is not varying, right. That is why the derivative is 0 minus 0 and B phi is also not varying along along z direction plus right just try to match each of these and so that we can understand what is going on. You see this, you go back. One thing is very clear, magnetic field component B R has a variation, B R changes when R changes. It can be, it, it need not be directly proportional, but B R has a variation, but B R has a variation, B R changes when R changes, right. And B phi is not changing, it is a constant thing. So, B phi is not changing when R is changing, when phi is changing, when Z is changing. And B Z is itself is 0 actually, right. So, if you bring this into the picture, so you see dou B Z by dou phi is 0 because that means the, the Z component of the magnetic field itself is 0. 
So, there is no point of taking a derivative with respect to phi. B phi do B phi with respect to z. With respect to z, of course, it is not changing. That is why it is 0, right. B r by B z do B r by do z. So, the radial component of the magnetic field, of course, does not have any variation with respect to the z coordinate. So, just for ready reference, I am drawing the coordinate system here. So, this direction is phi cap, out of the board is z cap and this is r cap. And do b z by do r, b z itself is 0, so the derivative will obviously be 0. b phi is of course, r b phi is changing with respect to r, why because? So, if you take b phi is the coordinate which is going here, right? b phi is this component. So, if you take different values of r and measure b phi, you will get different b phi, different magnitudes. So, that means that b phi is changing with respect to r. So, that is why I have retained this derivative as it is and the radial component of the magnetic field is not changing with respect to phi. So, at any value of phi, b r will be constant. So, b r, this will be 0. Right. So, this is the breakdown of all the terms inside this curl. Right. So, simplifying, we will write it simply as del cross B is equals to del cross B is equals to this 0, 0, 1 by R dou by dou R of r b phi right and this entire thing entire thing is along along z cap now from the maxwell equation from the maxwell equations we can write del cross b is mu naught j plus epsilon naught dou e by dou t right. So, this is what we know from the Maxwell equation, but for the configuration of the magnetic field that we have considered, we have realized that del cross b is equal to is equal to this. Right. Now, let us say we consider vacuum, we consider vacuum, where there is no free current density, there is no electric field. So, in that case, we can write del cross B, the curl of magnetic field will be 0, right, in vacuum, because we will say that there are no current densities which will, which can create a magnetic field, right. So, in that case, what we can do is, Maxwell equations in vacuum expect or require del cross B is equals to 1 by r dou by dou r of r p phi is equal to 0 or we can infer that r b phi is going to be a constant, fine, constant as long as you are, you are trying to look at the change along r. So, we can write which implies B phi, let us say we assume this constant to be k, B phi is equals to k by r. Now, if B phi is my k by r, do B phi by do r is equals to minus k by r square, that is equals to minus B phi by r. So, just look at this, B phi, the rate of change of B phi with respect to R is equals to minus k by R square. So, there is a minus here, right. So, as you increase the value of R, what is happening to the B phi? We can refer to that B phi is decreasing, right. So, this is a, there is a minus, right. So, that means that you have the gradient how do you have the gradient? Gradient is in this direction. As you are moving in this direction, with increasing r, b phi is going to be smaller. 
So, as you move larger distances, you will encounter smaller values of B phi, which, which means that your magnetic field was strong in the beginning or you can simply infer that the gradient is in this direction, del B is in this direction. So, this is one inference that comes directly out of out of this. Right. Now, let us say we, we now have a form for the magnetic field along this particular direction. Right. So, B phi is equal to which implies we, we can write B phi is equal to k by r phi cap. So, all the description that we have taken in the beginning is very well agreeing with the form of magnetic field that we have obtained. One thing that is a clear validation is it is along B, it is along phi cap fine and it is k by r. So, with increasing distance of r, the magnitude of B phi is changing or decreasing right. Now, let us say at r is equals to r c, we can write B phi is equals to k by r c along phi cap. Okay. Let us say we, we at r is equals to r c, this is the value. Okay. Now, let us take a ratio, we are just considering a ratio which we will probably use in some other form. Let us say we have a ratio of del b by mod b, which is equal to using this b phi relation, we can write it is minus k by r c square along R c cap by k by R c, right. Let us say we take this further, what is it? Del B by mod B is equals to at R is equals to R c, R c Yeah, it is quite obvious you see del B being directed along R cap, but not phi cap that is the basic nature B phi is along phi cap, but del B has to be along R cap or at R C it is along R C cap right. So, upon algebraic simplification we will get it as minus R C cap divided by R C or if you use the definition of a unit vector, R c cap is R c vector divided by mod R c. We can write it as minus R c by R c square. Right. So, from this ratio, we can write grad B as B times minus R C by R C square. Fine. So, this is what we are going to use further. So, we have V del B from the earlier expression plus minus half V perpendicular R L by B square times V cross del B. How you may ask? This is the relation that we have already derived B cross del B. Now, using del B for this formula, we can write V from this ratio, let us say we call this as equation number 1 equals to minus plus half V perpendicular R L by B square times B cross mod B R C by R C square. What have I done? I have using equation so, 
del v del b is now going to be minus plus half v perpendicular r l is m v perpendicular by q b b cross r c by r c square right and you have one more b v perpendicular by b or v del b is equals to minus plus half v perpendicular square divided by omega c times b cross r c by r c square. Yeah, so, this is using 1. So, we have v del b is equals to minus plus half v perpendicular square divided by omega c b b cross r c by r c square. So, this m by q b is what is written as omega c. Okay. For uh, if you are confused how did how did I get omega c, this is how I get it. Now, going back, so let us say we use this relation v, v del b is equals to minus plus v perpendicular square by omega c b times b cross r c by r c square. Rearranging the terms again, we will get half m v perpendicular square by q p square times b cross r c by r c square. Right. So, this is w perpendicular, the perpendicular kinetic energy by q b square into b cross r c by r c square. What is this? V del b. Now, if you remember the earlier ex expression for the curvature drift, right. So, now we had this b cross del b. What we have done by considering this geometry and making appropriate substitutions we have written b cross del b in terms of as b cross r c. So, that it matches with our expression for the curvature drifts. Right. Now, we will bring the curvature drift v r is v r is equals to m v parallel square by q b square times r c cross b by r c square. Right. So, we can now let us say we call this equation as 2 and 3. Now, we can combine 2 and 3 can be combined and we write v total. This is vacuum drifts. This is going to be written as m by q times v parallel square plus v perpendicular square by 2 times r c cross b divided by r c square p square. So, this is the total drift that the particle experiences when it sees a realistic magnetic field. This expression is also referred to as 
the total drift or vacuum drift. Why? Because we have taken del cross B as 0, which is valid for vacuum when there are no additional current densities and electric fields. Right. Now, if you consider this to be the total velocity of the particle experience, you can see that this total velocity V total depends on the mass of the particle right, and also depends on the charge 1 by Q is there. So, different polarities of part of charges will experience drifts in different directions. So, this is the discussion about combining both the drifts which are curvature and gradient drifts.